God, you and you thought he you was and dead. is so good at playing like traumatized. Like I would need a moment just to like not talk to a kid. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Look at this. He's so good. That is like Oof. my ears are ringing. <laughs> Calls him Anakin. Holy cow. I love, what a great edit. Oh, That's like my yes. favorite edit ever. And that back to tank was filthy. He like, he was a dirty boy. A lot of loose skin. <laughs> Welcome back to New Rock Stars. This is Wookie Leaks. We are live on location here outside of Star Wars Celebration 2022, the Anaheim Convention Center. I'm Eric Voss. I'm Tommy Bechtold and I am all goofed up on Obi-Wan Kenobi Frosted Flakes, baby. I'm reaching for them. Look at these. Not an ad, not a sponsor. Sponsor. They're great. Or are they evil? He didn't even know. have to dance for them. No. He just he sat there. I gave seized them out of the hands of a child. He planted his Jedi mind inside yeah. of theirs and said, you will give me those Frosted Flakes. I want flakes. your box of cereal. <laughs> now, when you clicked on this video, you saw me and Tommy reacting. That's something we recorded after what we were recorded now but trust us we just saw obi-wan kenobi episodes one and two we we were able to get invited to see an advanced screening with the cast and crew we get to see everybody Hayden christensen ewan mcgregor deborah chow moses ingram and rupert friend uh, jimmy smith's made jimmy appearance smith was there. hyped up the crowd the yeah. girl who, uh, whose name escapes me the place. Blair, uh, the, uh, uh, I believe is her name. Anyway, so we're uh, gonna do a live recording right here of, uh, of Wookie Leaks for you. We're gonna break down all your biggest questions that you had coming out of Obi-Wan episode one and two. Uh, and we're gonna start with the, the ending of that episode, uh, of episode two. Uh, a huge moment, smash cut to Hayden Christensen waking up in the back to tank. It seems like it might have just been yeah. Obi-Wan, his old master, yeah. finally saying his name after 10 years. Yeah, and he's like, what? Who the hell's calling me at this hour? I'm in my back to back. <laughs> I'm having me time Honey? Right honey? Is that the phone? <laughs> <laughs> or a Vane? Vane is yeah, your yeah, little creepy assistant? Yes. <laughs> Who is it? Yes, <laughs> master. Um, all right, so, uh, but before we talk about everything that happened in this episode, we want to give our, our friends uh, at the Epic Hero Shop a huge shout out because they have a brand new Obi-Wan Kenobi inspired shirt. Uh, I believe it says wanted in Orabesh there at the top. It, the design looks so amazing. Head on over to NewRockStarsMerch.com yes. uh, and, uh, and and get yourself one of those. When you do, uh, you'll have the added option to write in a custom shout out that we will uh, react to. They're gonna run along the bottom. I don't think people have bought the shirt yet, so we don't have any yet to react to, but uh, on Wednesday when episode three comes out, you better believe we're gonna be giving you some love. So Absolutely. make sure to get your hands on one of those shirts. And I'll be getting a shirt, and I'll be giving a shout out to you, Eric. <laughs> really? Uh, I'm gonna get a shirt and I'm gonna say, this one goes out to Eric. My, <laughs> Uncle Tommy. The, my my, my, uh, my pet. Padawan, <laughs> my, my Star Wars Celebration Padawan. <laughs> I'm walking Eric through the crowds. He's, I have him on one of those baby leashes. It's great. Tommy has been uh, a godsend because if, if not for him, I would just run. I would just run right into traffic uh, and I just feel a gentle tug back yeah. and I'm back in daddy's arms. You're safe. <laughs> You're safe here. <laughs> um, I wrote some notes on my phone, and we were not allowed to have our phones out. So I did this for you. In fact, at one point, I was just writing notes. I wasn't recording anything. I would never do that, especially since you know, the episode's going live <laughs> yeah, no like kidding. an hour or two after yeah, we're the, done. The bootleg um, wouldn't have too much street value in it. I had an usher say, yeah. sir, can you put your phone away? I had that humiliation that I had to suffer, but I needed the notes. I needed the notes. We had to have the notes. You I didn't realize he was actually talking to me. I was playing Angry Birds. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's uh, break down what happened in episode one. Uh, episode one, of course, we uh, opened in Order 66. The moment I saw the Coruscant skyline, I was like, oh, oh shit. No. <laughs> God damn it. Yeah. We're going to have to see some kids get We're murdered. To... We see a young Padawan wearing the stupid bowl helmet yeah. and doing some Tai Chi, you know, mm. some Jedi moves. Do isn't even equipped with a lightsaber to defend themselves yet. Right away, the 501st storms in. Tommy, what was your reaction to I that? I was like, my God, they're going to make us relive this over and over. We, we are now the haunted surviving yeah. Jedis. 
forced to relive the most traumatic night of our lives. In every over, series, every over, single series, we're going to revisit this. Oh my it's, God, it still gets you every single it's time. It's incredible. I had chills. I, was I like, love that what? we get to revisit it. Yeah, yeah. The, um, so I we say that. in a single take, it seems like, uh, like so we feel the, the trauma of this uh, in a whole new way. Um, and then we jump to 10 years later, the Inquisitors of uh, the Grand Inquisitor, the uh, fifth brother and the third sister, mm-hmm. Reva, are arriving in tattooing. And uh, they they go into this uh, shop, and there's like I like how they have intel mm-hmm. that there's a Jedi nearby who's helping people out. Mm-hmm. Like there's some Robin Hood here. Yeah, uh, we didn't sanction this force usage yeah. here. So uh, and we we learn that there's this interesting divide between uh, the Grand Inquisitor who wants he wants to seemingly convert people to explain his rationale. Right. Then you have the fifth brother who wants to use the carrot, right. and then you have Reva who wants to use the stick. Yeah. Uh, or in this case, use like a spearhead. Yes. Uh, like if I just she's totally willing oh, to use that she doesn't know she's uh, gonna get stopped with the force but she assumes i mean the grand inquisitor i think he made that side eye over right. at benny safty yeah and i think he knew well and there were the mo- slashes on the wall that looked like lightsaber slashes oh right? that that's there how, have been scuffled that, that's yeah. how i took it to be is oh, like benny cool. safty's jedi was not as cautious as obi-wan kenobi and he yeah. had used his lightsaber got it yeah that's i mean the the clues there the just the blocking you mm-hmm. know in this opening scene yeah. like, and the cutting to different extras faces yeah. i mean i gotta say background acting is a thankless job yes but the extras they had in that scene all did a wonderful job of possibly being the jedi as they were yeah it was like a hitchcock thing of like Who's the murderer in the room? Yeah. Is it the bald, masculine, like tough sure. looking guy who yeah. totally looked like he at any moment could just flip uh-huh. up his ball and start, you know, totally. force, force pushing people? I mean, had I not known that Benny Safty, like what he looks right, like, right, and he's right. gonna be in the show, right. I wouldn't have thought. Yeah. Uh, there was like a moment where he was kind of just like mm, doing some shifty, yeah, yeah. shifty expressions. Yeah. Um, so they, he ends up escaping, and then we go to Obi Wan. We see him at work. He's got a nice gig chopping up yeah, some meat from a, a, from a He's like a sushi chef. <laughs> yeah, and he always he's able to cut a little yeah. slice for himself and yeah. seems to just wait till the guy's not looking. Yes. And I like this this droid that they clock out on, like yeah. go, yeah, get go. out of here, go, 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 go. <laughs> It's like that. It's like that. Uh, that that's the droid equivalent of like the mush at your job. That's like happy <laughs> Monday, <laughs> same day, different world, living in paradise, another day in paradise. <laughs> it's like Rosie and the Jetsons yeah. a little bit. Uh, and uh, we see all these opportunities where Obi Wan can help people out. He doesn't. He uh, he doesn't help the guy who gets punched in the gut. All these cats that could get saved, he doesn't save the cat. I thought it was a really smart choice in episode one uh, to do that. Uh, we see that he has these uh, dreams, um, yeah. you know, at night. Uh, cutting back to all of our prequel highlight yeah. reels. Give, um, give us some Nisu. Give yeah. us some Christensen. Give us... And it man. seems like for a moment that's what they were gonna do. He he calls out into the cavern. He goes, Qui Gon, no response. Tommy, I feel like by the end of this, mm-hmm. we're gonna get a uh, a meet some. Qui Gon's gonna be like, stop calling me. <laughs> I am trying to bang a Natalie Portman's ghost. Whoa, stop it. whoa! The, the age gap is not okay. <laughs> I can't. I don't. She's forty. Niece is seventy. <laughs> Once you get over thirty, it's fine. No. And that's a Bechtold endorsement. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he, uh, we have this adorable uh, moment with the Jawa, yeah. <laughs> this Jawa who steals his stuff from Absolutely. himself and back to him. Obi Wan knows it. I guess that's our save the cat moment, yeah, right? Yeah, there, right? Yeah, yeah. Like the fact that he lets the Jawa get away with yeah. it, and he buys the T sixteen Skyhopper toy, the same one presumably that we think Luke plays with yes. in A New Hope. But Owen, Lars, later smashes it, throwing it back at him. But I love this little, like, uh, Santa Kenobi delivery yeah. at night. He just little leaves prize. little toys for young Luke, yeah. uh, who, who flees his uh, farmer uncle yeah. just so he can... Uh, and I like that moment. Like, he snuck away from him and then jumped up on the side of the homestead. Yes. She's like, what if I could fly away from yeah. this hole? <laughs> I wish I could literally fly the sandy glue out of here, because this place <laughs> sucks. Yeah. Um, we get another refusal to call where Obi Wan talks to Benny Safdie's yeah. Jedi and just refuses to help him out. Yeah, and he's like, "What happened to you?" Just kind of voicing all of us, like, "What happened yeah. to this guy?" I mean, we know what happened. Heartbreak. To him. Heartbreak yeah. happened to him. Yeah. Um, but it uh, then we have one of my favorite transitions ever. We cut to the cliffs of Alderaan, yes. and I lost my mind because I know what this geography looks like. We get a nice little fake out again where the little princess is being dressed up, but it's not Leia, it's her fake oh, out. She loves that. She loves sending a body double, even one that is a completely different alien species. Yep. Doesn't yep. care. 
She's got her little droid Lola. She's tree climbing. She's uh, spotting different ships. I like how this is kind of like, we get to see how similar she is with her brother. Like the fact that her brother would, you know, look at different ships and mm -hmm. be able to spot. I mean, there was those deleted scenes from uh, from A New Hope. Yeah, where, where he was with Biggs and yeah. they were, he was able to be like, oh, those ships, like Leia was doing the same thing on yeah. Alderaan. And I love that. Mm -hmm. uh, great cast and they got the girl from Bird Box. Yeah, playing Leia. she's great. She's incredible yes. on the show. Uh, wise beyond her years. Yes. Uh, but as was, you know, as, as was, was 18 or 19 year old Carrie Fisher in a right. new oak, right? Totally, like, totally. Yeah. She's not, she's only, isn't that crazy? This girl's nine years away. Yeah. <laughs> nine years away I from know. being the Leia we knew in a I new oak. Uh, she was phenomenal. <laughs> yeah. She was the highlight, I think, of those two episodes. I already said hi to Connor earlier. Oh, hey, what my name's Todd. Hi, Todd. Nice to meet you. Um, so we just, I mean, there's been so many wonderful people here, uh, and you just caught a moment of that. Uh, super nice people have come to say hello. And uh, if you see this video and we're still around, come say hi to us. We love yeah. meeting all we of you. We don't mind it. We, we fact, really we don't mind it. it. And it makes us look cool. And honestly, it does, and we never are cool. The babes go nuts. When, <laughs> when they do it. It's a palpable emotion here. Um, so we get to uh, hang out with uh, the Organas, basically, mm -hmm. on, on uh, Alderaan. And it's just so sad to see this beautiful, beautiful kingdom on Alderaan, knowing what yes. is going to happen yeah. to it in the future. Okay. It just sucks. Um, now jumping ahead here, um, when uh, the you know the Alderaan extended family comes into town, I like how Bale is even kind of like sick of them. Yeah, uh, like this whole side of the family sucks. Yeah, these guys are like really annoying. Yeah privileged cousins yes. <laughs> they're like oh we're not getting uh we're, we're not eating wagyu beef <laughs> wagyu crate tonight we're just getting sirloin crate is this is this is this rib roast crate <laughs> i only eat wagyu so uh she she shuts down her cousin yeah. later sneaks out gets snatched by bandits bandits like including flea. Flea. <laughs> perfect casting yes. across the board on the show the yes. casting's great um also we were promised a cameo by flea he is a main player in two oh, episodes of this show. Big deal on yeah. the show. Uh, so uh, Bale and his wife put out the call to Obi-Wan. He, again, denies the call, gets someone better. He's, he accepts the fact that he's mm -hmm. past his prime. Mm -hmm. I think I think that wasn't just him being lazy. I think yeah. he's like, I'm not the man for the job. I'm going to yeah. get my ass kicked. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't do... I mean, he's... It, it's kind of a... His fight scenes are not him, like, John Wicking people. No. His fight scenes are him getting his ass kicked as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so um, Leia gets snatched, and uh, Bale actually makes a personal visit, yeah. which is a big deal for a senator like him yeah. to go to a shithole yeah. like Tatooine. Right. You know he had to ride in the OP and yeah. his balls are chafing. Yeah, like, this is it. hard, yeah. a hard visit. They took my daughter. Um, and then, uh, that's a different niece and different, uh, <laughs> but uh, I like how we close out this episode by Obi-Wan. He yeah. told Benny Sapi's character, bury your, your yeah. lightsaber, yeah. and of course that's what Obi-Wan did. He yeah. buried both his and they're Anakin all lightsabers. burying lightsabers and i love the Tatooine. symbolism of that he, he it's almost like he buried himself yeah. his jedi self and anakin's yeah. jedi self he buried obi-wan and dirt. ben rose from the sand <laughs> yeah. like uh like uh like uh what thomas hayden church in, yeah. in spider-man 3. <laughs> um and then he he leaves the planet flashing his lightsaber on his side and then we move on to episode two we go right to dayu uh, a beautiful uh, world building here. Yeah, the design is great. Amazing. Um, Futuristic, obviously. Sorry, yes. statement of the century, but like, uh -huh. it looks, I mean, it's kind of like those Macquarie artworks of like the future towns of the future yes. and like things like that. Is, yeah, it was, uh, it was very cool. It looks cool based on Hong Kong, apparently. Orbesh everywhere. I'm going to be breaking all of that down in a breakdown. Yeah. You stay tuned. Um, but we get this amazing cameo of a clone trooper played by Tamara Morrison. Yeah. You know, speaking of cameos, I completely skipped over something from episode one. Yeah. The character who gets her hand chopped off in Tatooine. Yes. I uh, completely skipped over Owen Lars as well, telling Obi Wan to back yeah. off. Yeah. Um, but and the fact that he did this for for Obi Wan, that he was able to uh, to to not come clean. Yeah. Uh, and he said, "I didn't do it for you." Obviously, it seems like he did it for his family, right. but I think he also did it for. Obi -Wan. I think there's a little bit of him that knows that. Yeah. Anakin did himself in, you know, yeah. like there's a part of him that's like, because he always kind of disapproved of Anakin's behavior, right? Like, yeah. he was never like, this is cool. Right. So I think there was, yeah, there's a little piece of him that's like, I know he did it to himself a little bit too, yeah. but... Yeah. Well, and also, like, I think he so fears Reva in yeah. that moment to where he's like, even if I tell her I knew a Jedi at she's all, it's gonna, kill, yeah. she's gonna talk to Obi-Wan, he's gonna find out 
why yeah, right. why he's there and yeah, it's gonna right. hurt it's gonna come back to Luke right, and right, I don't right. want Luke to get killed right. and I'm gonna get killed right. and, and Bruce gonna get killed right so um, anyway so uh, yeah so Tommy tell us yes what you're uh, near well I guess you know I actually auditioned to be the character that got their hand cut off and argue with the Inquisitors uh, obviously they went with nearly a body double of mine, uh, so that always stinks. No, I'm a middle-aged not, woman with yeah, red hair. With red hair. I was telling Eric, uh, you know, when you audition as an actor and then you see the final product of a role that you didn't get, it always feels so much better when it's the physical opposite of you, when you're like, <laughs> oh, there was never a point where they were like, it's either this giant hairy man or this tiny little red-headed woman. It was, <laughs> never, I'm sure that was never the conversation, but what an honor to get a chance to even audition for that show. And yeah. hopefully if they make more Star Wars, which it seems like they might, based on the panels we're at today, I'll get another chance to get in there, guys, because nothing would please me more than to look all of you in the eye through a camera lens and break <laughs> down an episode of Star Wars content that I was in. Can you I, can you tell us what your line was? Like, yeah, what it was that line. It was that line. So, so they everything is coded. It's all everything. Like all the characters were referred to as like the general, and I was referred to as like a uh, factory worker. And it was like you have no jurisdiction here. Like the like the the Empire doesn't control the outer rim. And then the, and then in the sides it said a weapon cuts off your hand. And that's when I knew it had to be a lightsaber. And baby, let me tell you, they might have seen a little desperation in my eyes in that audition <laughs> tape because. Your boy was hungry for some Kenobi role. Although it didn't even say it was Kenobi. It just said live action Disney project. I'm probably giving away trade secrets. I don't care. For the new Rockstars fans, it's Celebration. I give it away. Favreau says give it all away at Celebration. I'm with that. You're getting the scoop. That's right. So You're anyway, blessed to even have the opportunity. Happy for that redheaded woman. Yep. I'll see you in Kenobi season four. <laughs> um, so speaking of cameos, um, Tamara Morrison showed That's... up as a clone trooper. I don't think it's Rex. No. I think it's a clone trooper. And Tommy yeah. spotted something in the credits yeah. that, of episode two yeah. that he, he he was not on set. Yeah. I think they mocapped his face yeah. and they used his voice. Yeah. But they had a different actor in because there. he wasn't even in the a guest star co star credits right. that would normally come at the end where you see like Kamal's name and right. all the other actors. He was just listed in like a almost like voice effects where they put the droids and like mm -hmm. the, the droid actors and yeah. stuff like that. We're like Bill Hader and um, uh, what's his name? Ben, uh, uh, the guys who did BB-8 the first oh, one. Oh yeah, Ben yeah. Schwartz. And Ben Schwartz, but, you yeah. know, How they were kind of credited as like VS VFX voiceover, uh -huh. like buried in the credits, it's kind of like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, uh, so uh, Obi-Wan is able to track down, he's looking for the girl, yeah. trying not to add himself as a Jedi, and find someone who is pretending to be a Jedi, awesome. played by Jamil. I freaking love Jamil this. Nanjiani, perfect casting yeah. as a con man, yeah. grifting people, but still doing the honorable thing of trying to yeah. get them off world just yeah. a little poor. But doing it like a like a carnival hustler, yeah, like magnets, <laughs> strings, a guy stuff. working with them on the other yeah. end, pretending to be Jedi mind the, control, the wizard. Yeah, yeah. But he was like the Wizard of Oz of that world. I like just like how susceptible the people of Dai you are. They've never yeah. seen automated doors yeah. and shutters Absolutely. before. Absolutely, <laughs> they're like, what? Yeah, we have to do everything manually. It's like, meanwhile, everything is futuristic. People are like floating outside, yeah. cooking on like old like X-wing engines. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Okay, so Obi Wan now goes through like a meth lab. It mm -hmm. looks like. Yeah. Uh, and is able to get to where he thinks. Uh, Leia is being kept, but it's a trap, yeah. of course, uh, because uh, Reva sent these bandits. Yeah. And uh, smart move, smart play by Reva, just a yeah. ballsy one. And uh, and then, yeah, is able to get to her cell after beating up some other guys uh, and is gassing Flea because yeah. Flea catches him and he's able to like throw a smoke grenade. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and then, uh, I think he spiced him, didn't he? It, it was, was like, spice, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, it must have been drugs, right? Yeah. I love that we finally get to see someone under the influence yeah. of spice. Because it's always yeah. been talked about, we've never actually seen no. it. Is that the TV 14 rating? Oh my god, spice that's, usage? yeah, that's why this one went up on a notch, I think. Yeah, yeah they're, they're gonna be people mainlining spice, and the next one it's gonna yeah. be MA 17. <laughs> uh, we get a uh, tempers flare between the Inquisitors at this point because uh, the Grand Inquisitor did not want uh, Reva to do this, right. but he's not gonna let her take the glory of this kill mm -hmm. uh, and wants to track down Obi Wan himself. I like how the fifth brother at one point we see him walk towards the camera and then just like walk away from the mm -hmm. camera. You know they had a Sun King just like walk towards the camera and it's like and reverse shot. Okay, walk mm -hmm. away. Uh, and uh, and then Reva pulls the John Wick two and just activates all the bounty hunters in there. Oh, we had some yeah. nice cameos in there. That was fun. Yeah. Uh, and then meanwhile, Obi Wan and Leia, you know, lovely banter between yeah, these two. So much fun. Her making fun of how old he is. Held his grandfather yes. maybe. He's like, what was that? Yes. <laughs> and the, she he, she has this moment where. 
where he's like, you remind me of someone. She's like, was well, she a Jedi? That. No, she was a leader. Yeah. Uh, talking about her mother, Padme, for a second, I'm right. like, it's he talking about Satine. Well, and that is... It, but oh, it was yeah. Padme. I'm pretty it, sure it was Padme. And, and that is a great Star Wars thing where they play on your reliance and hero worship of the male characters. Right. Only to, like the whole tri original trilogy leads up to Yoda being like, there is another, you know, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. like or, or whatever. And then, you, you know, like Leia ends up kind of being the one that like, I mean, ultimately Luke, obviously, like, you know, turns Vader back over to the, to the light side of the force. But still, it, like in this one, it was great. Like you thought like, oh, maybe he's talking about Anakin. Yeah. And then it's like, no, he's talking about Padme. Maybe. Like, yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, Reva parkours around Dayu uh, until she's able to get in, find the firefight mm -hmm. uh, with uh, with Obi Wan and the other mm -hmm. bounty hunters. Um, but then uh, they're able to escape um, thanks to uh, Camille comes back. Yeah, does he the, breaks good. He breaks good. Yeah, and he even like <clears throat> stalls her, yeah. which is so sweet. Yeah. Uh, bummer though, uh, she she force chokes him, but he, he didn't die. He didn't die. I'm surprised she didn't kill him. Yeah, because you got to so think too. like to her, it's got to be insulting. But I think that tells us something about her. Yeah, she has one singular yeah, pursuit, and that's would, to find Obi Wan. Yeah. If it were the Grand Inquisitor or or the Fifth Brother, I think he would have killed him. Just. Yeah feeling disgusted with yeah. someone who would pretend to be a Jedi. I agree. Um, anyway, so uh, Reva is creepy as all hell. Yeah. Obi-Wan. Oh, I know. Uh, Come out to play. Come out to play. <laughs> uh, they're able to escape, but she reveals to him something Obi-Wan did not know that Anakin is alive. And some great face acting great by McGregor. They put the camera right He's in his like, face. Are you kidding me? He was I chopped off every piece of that guy. <laughs> What I have to do to kill someone? But it gives us this nice moment where he hasn't even thought about yeah. Like, he's thought about it, of course, right. but he couldn't have even fathomed that he would yeah. still be alive. Which is, we'll, we'll talk about that more in a second. They're able to get away. Uh, and as, uh, you know, she screams after him, great moment. And then as they head to a new planet, Mapuzo, that's where we're going to be headed next. Uh, some people who can help him out. Uh, which is a deep cut. Deep cut from, like, a Star Wars role-playing game, I believe, in the 90s. Um, I believe next episode we'll see the Fortress Inquisitorius, we'll see Vader. Uh, Obi-Wan looks directly at Cameron and says, Anakin, smash cut to Hayden Christensen in the back to tank. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, amazing music sting. We got to credit yeah. both John Williams for coming up with this new amazing Obi-Wan score. Like and Natalie Holt, that. the Loki composer, mm -hmm. who did all the rest of the music for the series. Mm -hmm. Some great tracks mm -hmm. throughout. Like, yeah. I, was, I was captivated by the musical storytelling. Um, that's what we're going to talk about right now. This little moment between the two of them. It's like this, this, they had a forced link. Yes. Uh, have they been sensing each other? Have they been blocked by each other? Who yeah. might have been blocking them? We'll right. talk about that in a second. Uh, but first, we want to thank some people who helped us make this episode, and we'll be right back. A huge thanks to Mint Mobile for sponsoring this episode of WikiLeaks. If you're tired of fine print contracts and getting ripped off by big wireless providers for your cell phone service, then maybe it's time for a switch. Mint Mobile offers premium wireless starting at just 15 bucks a month. They are the first company to sell wireless service online only. They cut out the cost of retail stores and pass those sweet savings directly to you. Mint Mobile gives you the best rate whether you're buying for one or for a family, and at Mint, families start at two lines. All plans come with unlimited talk and text, plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. We have several members of the New Rockstar staff that use Mint Mobile. Editor Wiley got to use his own phone and keep his same phone number along with all of his existing contacts. Switch to Mint Mobile and get premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and to get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash wookie. That's mintmobile.com slash w-o-o-k-i. I -E -E. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash Wookie. Okay, Tommy, our first question from yes. this episode. Uh, ha why haven't they been able to sense each other? Was this the moment they became aware of each other? Um, let's talk about that. Well, I think we see in the first episode, Obi-Wan is reaching out to people in his dreams, right? Uh -huh. Like he yeah. calls out to Qui-Gon. I think Obi-Wan probably chalked it up to sensing someone from the beyond. Like uh -huh. the same as he is seeking Qui-Gon, perhaps he's seeking redemption with Anakin as a force ghost, you know? Yeah. Like maybe he's like, if I can reason with him uh, or if I can communicate with Qui-Gon, maybe the two of us can reach Anakin and like bring peace to at least his soul or whatever the Jedi, you know, believe in in that regard. But I don't think he considers the possibility of him being alive. And I think with Vader, the anger, his pure hatred and anger yeah. didn't blocks out his like understanding that his children are alive yeah. at first. 
and his understanding that that Obi Wan is you know out there somewhere hiding. I mean, obviously, he probably assumes Obi Wan is alive, right? But like. He, he knows Obi Wan is alive. Right. We know that from the Chuck Soul comics. Right. Chuck Soul, Charles Soul, right. whatever you, you want to go by. Uh, had uh, we know when he formed the the Inquisitor, he didn't form it, but when he took over the Inquisitors, Obi Wan's name showed up on there. He didn't right. fixate on it a lot, right. but he knows that Obi Wan's still right. alive. Right. Hates him, um, but like doesn't. It seemed like this moment yeah. he was like, I feel seen. Yeah, you know. Maybe he was just kind of like the last little Anakin in him was like, if he doesn't know I'm alive, I'm not going to go after him yet. And then now yeah. he's like, he knows I'm alive, I got to kill him. Right, <laughs> right. Uh, it's like he woke him up from yeah. a slumber. Yeah. Like, he's been so fixated on yeah. so many other things. Vader rising to power and taking yeah. control and, you know, being number two in the Empire. And now yeah. all of a sudden he's like, personal vendettas. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like you don't make business for pleasure. Yeah. You know. I have to wonder if, like... You know, some something about the Force may have kept these two apart until now. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm just always going to say the Force is like the <laughs> mystical force that keeps us apart or yeah. keeps us together. And I think there may be a reason why these two are kept apart until now. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the fact that Obi-Wan didn't know is pretty telling about his exile and yeah. how secluded he's made himself. And how much he gave up, really gave yeah. up on using the Force and being in tune. And how alone he is. Yeah. Like, uh, Obi-Wan has said, uh, you know, uh, plenty of times how he really believes in the strength by, strength of numbers among the Jedi. He's part of a collective and, you know, that it takes a village right. to uh, to keep the Jedi orthodoxy and strong. And he doesn't even use the Force in the privacy of his own home. Right. He's he not, even in that cave, yeah. he's not, like, closing things and opening he's things. He's bitter. He's, like, yeah. rejected it. Right. He's, he's, uh, he's using, you know, a knife to cut the meat, right. which is just... Obviously, he's not going to get karate chopper with his hands. I'm just saying, like, yeah. he, this is a man who's uh, now salt of the earth. He's right. using his hands manually for everything. He doesn't use Jedi mind tricks when he could. He doesn't use the Force at all. Mm -hmm. I think, obviously, not to out himself and, and endanger Luke, but also as, like, a kind of a, a grudge, I think, he feels yeah. towards the Force and the Jedi mindset. Certainly. And I think that seclusion that he's put himself in has extended to uh, isolation from his Jedi friends who could call out to him. That's why Obi-Wan doesn't, or that's why Qui-Gon doesn't answer him. I don't think he's talked to uh, Yoda in years either. Like, the guy's been completely cut off. Yeah. Um, who knows what Yoda's doing? <laughs> yeah. So I think yeah. that's going to be his arc yeah. on this show is, like, by reconnecting with Anakin, it's going to be almost a reunion between Obi-Wan and the Force. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why it's why it's scary to see the two reconnect it's also kind of gets your heart racing because you, you're happy for them that they're going to be uh connecting because there are so many unresolved issues right. that obviously there's going to be a duel but i think there were there needs to be words exchanged between the two of them yeah um they both uh like in invaders path forward uh he needs to kind of figure out yeah he's not yet the master yeah he's got more lessons to learn from his Do old you master. think we're gonna get hayden christensen's voice we must. Under the Mask? Oh, see, Under the Mask, I don't know. Or do you I, think that's still James Earl Jones? I think it's got to be James Earl yeah, Jones just right. because we right. associate right. those two, that right. image with that right. with that voice. Right. It's going to feel weird if yeah. we hear Hayden's voice. Yep. But I want the fact that we start with him in the back of the tank, yep. start with his face, not with Vader's yeah. mask, right. it tells us a lot, and I can't wait to see more of that. Yep. Like, that's what I want I uh, from them. And um, That's yeah. my ride. I feel like we should see some rebel uh, pilots on the back of that. <laughs> um, so, rebel, I shot down a rebel transport for you, my lord. <laughs> Let's talk about some other questions. So we see the Grand Inquisitor get stabbed yes. in the gut by Reva. Huge yes. power move by Reva. Yeah, and very unexpected based on early trailers for this. Right? We were like, Grand Inquisitor, he's obviously the man. He, and he's going to live on because he's in Rebels, which takes place after this. Right. So I think we got to just say there's no way the Grand Inquisitor is dead yeah. because uh, he, he's alive in Rebels. Right. There's plenty of ways that you can get bodily uh, yeah. harm right. paired up. We just saw the mod yeah. shop in the Book of Please, Boba Fett. Thundercat, come on back. Thundercat is just around the corner in He's the outer room. He's probably like six in this <laughs> timeline. <laughs> so. He'd be a bit young. Yeah. We don't know how old Thundercat is. That yeah. guy may just age really yeah, well. Thundercat He's... might be 90 for all I know. <laughs> yeah, who knows? Yeah. Um, so I assume he's going to get some machinery in there. I mean, look, if, if uh, something just fell from the tree and it hurt. Um, oh, no. If, 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 uh, if Anakin Skywalker can get most of his body burnt off, I yeah. think uh, I think the Grand Inquisitor can yeah. survive a stab. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't. Yeah. I mean, she didn't like twist. She just no, went, no, yeah. no, no. I mean, only Harrison Ford dies that way. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler for a movie that came out six years. Um, other questions. Other questions we have. Okay, so Qui Gon. Are we guaranteed to get a Qui Gon? We cameo gotta by be. The end of this we season? gotta be. He's calling out to him. Yeah. It's not like he's like calling out to like 
you know, like something like just like Anakin or whatever. Like he says Qui Gon. Yoda told him that he's been re receiving, you know, whatever force vibrations from Qui Gon. Yeah, it's got to happen. Come on, baby. Yeah, give it to us. Um, are we going to see or hear of any rumors about the Death Star? Ooh. on this show because yeah. we see Alderaan yeah. right and I think it's in the back of all of our minds like yeah. oh it sucks to see this beautiful place yeah. uh, it's all going to be gone yeah. um, you know we're going to be visiting the Fortress Inquisitorius there's really no reason for them to have Death Star battle plans yeah. up on any of their screens yeah. but like are we going to see Palpatine perhaps right. on the show well Is how long gonna... ago did Jyn because Jyn Erso's father is the architect of the Death Star right uh, yeah he's yeah he's, so, uh, he's on the team right. at least so how long ago I wonder how long prior to Rogue One was he supposed to be working with the Empire I wonder that so uh, Rogue One is gonna be nine years from now yeah. uh, and that's the main events of Rogue One yeah. Jen Erso so yeah this is around the time I think it makes sense when Krennic that, yeah. kidnapped yeah. Galen Erso oh what if we get a Galen Erso Krennic cameo huh? I mean we just saw the Andor trailer today I yeah. feel like if Krennic or Galen show up yeah, it's gonna be an Andor you're right, you're right. Um, but like, I just want some. Uh, maybe Mandelson. they could just reference it. Like, yeah. I, I mean, I think McDarmid could do like a hollow screen yeah, cameo, yeah, sure. and and and, uh, and just kind of mention to Vader like, nothing can go wrong right now. I'm spending a lot of cash I'm on this very new cash station. Poor, asset rich right now. Now's not a good time for me to invest in your <laughs> soda brand, Doc. <laughs> I won't give you any capital money. It's a no for me. <laughs> That's no from Five Sharks, Don. Thank you for coming in. Have a good day. Well done. That's why I love co-hosting with this guy. We're going to leave it there. What an amazing first oh two my episodes. God. I was what an amazing away. first day of celebration. I'm so glad we get to do this I together, know. Eric. I know. I'm going to be working through the night on the breakdowns of episodes. I'm going to do a separate breakdown for episode one, a separate one for episode two. Lots of Easter eggs. Yeah. Lots of little references, yeah. little things that like I already started to notice. I'm going to be working through the night to get yeah. these done. So the breakdown for episode one coming out on Saturday, breakdown for episode two coming out on Sunday. So Ooh, I appreciate Eric, your patience. We love you, and we couldn't do it without you, Eric. Thank you. I couldn't do it without from you. From all of us, every all the fans and me, Eric, we really appreciate those breakdowns. They're the best, and that's why we keep coming back. Thank yeah. you guys for watching. Thank you so much for watching. And again, if you happen to watch this and you're still in the Anaheim area, yeah. we're going to be around all weekend. Yeah. So come say hi Meet to me us. Meet me at the Denny's at 6 a.m. <laughs> I'll be the one slamming coffee into my face at a dangerous rate. Moon's <laughs> over my Tommy. <laughs> so uh, we appreciate you watching this. Again, check out our merch options at NewRockStarsMerch.com. Uh, follow Tommy at Tommy Bicto. Follow me at EA Voss. Follow New Rockstars at New Rockstars. Subscribe to New Rockstars for breakdowns of uh, everything you love. Thanks for watching and goodbye, goodbye there. <laughs> we did it. Yeah. We don't have a script. <laughs> wow. We're good. Yeah. We're good.